Hi and welcome back to this course on memories in VLSI. In this video, we will try to understand a special or an alternative type of cell for 60 SRAM cell, which is 70 SRAM cell. Please note that this is an alternative cell and uh, this is just for your information, but it is possible that the industry is not using these kind of uh, cells because of some reason. So we will try to understand what is the motivation behind uh, developing this 70 SRAM cell and what are its drawbacks and all. Okay, so as you can see in this figure, uh, there are two types of 70s which uh, I have shown in this figure. So where is uh, the extra transistor that we have added? One as you can see over here, which is just below the inverter, right? And also one more over here. Here, this is one more uh, different configuration. So what are its advantages? There are multiple different types of things that people uh, develop basically uh, by adding one transistor and they try to, uh, most of the, uh, most of these configurations will have one, uh, two major things as their agenda or their motivation. One is the power dissipation that happens in uh, SRAM cell is basically in 60 SRAM cell is basically because of the static power dissipation because most of the time your SRAM cell will not be switching only when a read or write operation is done the SRAM cell tries to switch so because of that uh, the dynamic power dissipation is pretty less and the static power dissipation uh, or leakage power dissipation is basically high so we somehow try to minimize that by adding a cell over here or a cell over here and one more uh, major um, importance is the sizing of the transistor as we all know that 60 sram cell uh, needs um, read stability and writability uh, constraint to be met so uh, in that constraint uh, we know that this access transistor uh, has to be a little weaker than this driver transistor and similar to this has to be weaker than that of uh, this uh, access transistor so those conditions make uh, us to resize or uh, there is a sizing constraint the ratio of the sizes of these uh, transistor has to be met so what we can do is by adding these kind of transistors we can reduce the noise margin right by adding this kind of transistor we can uh, actually reduce uh, the noise margin we, it, it is by default adding it and it's becoming a little stronger and this virtual ground also makes an effect so what happens is basically the noise margin uh, gets uh, better and better so also uh, if you can see over here this is actually isolating this transistor is isolating q, q bar and this um, next input so what is happening is by isolating the read and write access transistors, the constraint of sizing uh, the access transistors can be avoided, right? We don't need to uh, size those transistors, basically. Large uh, write and uh, small read access transistors can be used, uh, which will ensure cell stability. So the stability constraint can be uh, completely avoided just by making sure that we can use it uniformly everywhere we can isolate this but note that there is another input uh, that has been sent over here that is an extra logic which is uh, its overhead right but it's most likely that this 70 trans uh, sram cell is not used in the industry that's mostly because 70 sram cells uh, need dual vt uh, transistors requiring additional technology and masking cost and that cost could be higher be it like if uh, if it is uh, going costly for one single cell then there are millions of cells that are being used so uh, the masking cost could be much higher so because of these reasons uh, s70s are rarely uh, used in industry standards uh, we will discuss uh, 80 and 20 transistors in uh, upcoming videos and why they are uh, used dominantly over uh, these kind of cells we will understand that uh, this is about 70 sram cell thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye bye